Hi, this is Sapil Bharati and today we are going to talk about Linux Mint. As you all know that Linux Mint is one of the most uh, popular Linux based operating system. It's, it's kind of, it seems to be aimed at uh, relatively conservative users who want to use a simple OS that uh, uh, makes a lot of decisions for them. Its UI seems to be uh, inspired by Windows XP because it has that WIMP interface which is, stands for Windows, icons, uh, mouse and a pointer so that you know those uh, users feel comfortable so when the new version came out i obviously you know i downloaded it and i've been using it for almost a week now i don't review uh, anything um, immediately i take my time to play with it so that i know ins and outs so let's let's talk about it the first thing is installation since uh, linux mint doesn't come pre-installed on mainstream hardware installation is the first interaction a user has with linux mint and thanks to the legacy of Ubuntu, the installation process is very easy. You just click next and it's done. It's as easy as installing Windows or even Mac OS on your system. So as long as you are not doing dual boot or you are not creating a lot of partitions, it's relatively easy so any new users can very easily install it. Once you install Linux Mint on your system, you will be greeted with this, you know, start a screen, which I think is neat for new users, you know, somebody who has never used Linux Mint. So, so far, everything looks pretty good and, and kind of, you know, neat. But what can it do? I mean, we don't use operating system. We use uh, a computer as a tool to get work done. There are certain use cases where Linux cannot handle my workload. So I resort to using Mac OS and Windows 10 in those use cases. I use all three platforms. I use Mac OS, I use Windows 10 and I use Linux. So I also have a very good idea about the pros and cons of each platform. So when I sit down to review uh, a, a product or a project, I'm not coming uh, from somebody who has lived only in that particular bubble like uh, 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 only Windows 10 user or only Mac OS user or only Linux user. Uh, the problem with those users is that they have not seen the other side of the pond so have no idea how things are done. So that is why actually using all these platforms is more like traveling. You know, when you travel to different countries, you learn from their culture, you, you learn from their pros and cons and you come back and you try to you know improve things in your own society. My Linux machine is mostly used for writing because all I need is a, a web browser, a text editor and a word processor. And Linux Mint has all three areas covered. It comes with Xed. It's a text editor which is similar to uh, Gedit or Kate that you see on GNOME and uh, KD Plasma. It comes with Firefox web browser and it comes with LibreOffice which is one of the greatest you know open source applications out there. So I can boot into Linux Mint, connect the internet and get it started. It's easy peasy. Uh, I tried it on three machines. Uh, one Dell XPS 13, one my custom PC and I even tried on Mac and it worked flawlessly on all three machines. Um, wireless was detected. Touch screen is still gets a problem on uh, Linux based distributions. Uh, high DPI also needs a bit of tweaking, but everything else worked out of the box. So there was no problem whatsoever. I don't watch movies or listen to music on my laptop. <laughs> uh, when I'm home, I'm either using my 4K TV or VR from Sony and Samsung. Uh, to watch movies and TV shows. When I'm traveling, I use my iPad. For music, I love the Apple AirPods because they ca I can pair them with my I iPhone X, a Samsung Note 8 and Pixel phone. So, and the sound quality is amazing and they're very easy to carry. So I love these. So I never use PC for these kind of entertainment anymore. But for those of you who do use it, uh, there is a built-in uh, music app which you can use and of course you can use google music netflix uh, all those web-based streaming services almost all of those you know uh, movie or tv shows streaming services use some kind of drm to protect their content and firefox uh, has implemented drm but you have to enable it so when you open netflix you will see a bar on top which asks you to enable drm and once you enable it you can start enjoying things like netflix and no problem there and OS is like a living being you know you have to keep it healthy you have to maintain it you have to keep it updated uh, in terms of linux mint managing the system is quite easy it's just like mac os and windows you know you just open the software manager and it will show if there are any updates available you click on the button give a password 
and it will install those updates once in a while when there are updates available you can always see them in a notification bar uh, also you can configure uh, this option where it will automatically install updates the only problem is they are using the term upgrade which can be confusing because upgrade would mean from one major version to other major version so let's say you are running linux mint 19 so if you click on that button does that mean when linux mint 20 is out your system will automatically be upgraded to Linux Mint 20. I'm not sure about that. So uh, that term is a bit confusing, but I am assuming that it simply means just the way on Mac OS and Windows, you have the option where if there are updates available, it will automatically be installed on your system. However, there's one uh, that was not the only problem that I saw on that page. When you do open the update manager, you will see this bar which offers you to create snapshots of your system, which means that if something goes wrong, you can go back to the previous working state. It's, 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 a, it's a great feature and I think it's good that uh, Linux Mint has finally borrowed some ideas from Apple to offer this feature. They actually even borrowed the name. Apple calls it Time Machine, Linux Mint calls it Timesheet. Well, that's where the similarities end because while Time Machine is very easy to use, you click on the button, it will ask you for the, for the location where you want to make the copy of the system and it will start making backups. But when you click on snapshots, they give you two options. One says rsync and one says ptrfs. I mean, if you look at the target audience of Linux Mint, it's meant for, you know, mamas and papas. They have no clue what rsync and btrfs is. Okay, no problem. Linux Mint has given description. But if you go through that, it will make you even more confused because it doesn't tell you which one you should use in what use case. Even I was clueless about which one to choose. So I simply did not choose any of the two. And I'm sure that most Linux Mint users do the same thing. They just don't do it because it's confusing. And, and that's where things started to go kind of south because I rely heavily on, you know, uh, mail, calendar and contacts, you know, Linux Mint comes with Thunderbird, which I think is in a state of limbo. I don't know who is maintaining it anymore, but Thunderbird doesn't offer integration between address book and calendar. You have to install calendar separately. I spend a lot of time uh, and then I install lightning calendar, though Thunderbird has built in address book. But even if I set up the account and let it sit for an hour, I synchronize everything. Even that when I open, uh, when I start, you know, writing a mail, it will not populate the two fields so i had to go back to address book or i have to go back to mails search for the name of the person copy that uh, address book and paste it so it's too much pain and then there is no integration with the calendar whatsoever so after wasting a lot of time i ended up installing evolution email client which is uh, more than just an email client it's by the gnome uh, project uh, but it offers a very tight integration between a calendar uh, contact and email so uh, once i set it up and synchronize if i open the if i start writing an email it will automatically populate the the full address but when i try to configure evolution on linux mint somehow it was throwing me a lot of errors so it took me a lot of time to actually configure it so i was not happy and this <laughs> this experience reminded me why i switched from linux to mac on my laptop the the second issue that i faced with linux mint was that uh, it comes with firefox as as a web browser which is okay i use both firefox and chrome on my systems but linux mint has tweaked firefox and configured yahoo as the default search engine yahoo i don't know whether linux mint developers don't read news anymore or they are drinking something special because yahoo first of all yahoo search is powered by bing which is okay bing is not a bad search but for example when i search for tfir bing doesn't even show my site result and site has been there for a long time you know it should have already indexed it anyway so it's not just that the biggest problem is that yahoo as a company is infamous for getting its users account hacked and they do not inform the users for years. I mean, if you read news, you'll see that Yahoo was hacked in 2015 and they did not inform the users till 2017. 
it was only when Verizon was buying Yahoo, that's when a lot of these stories surfaced. So why would you trust a company like that? Second thing is that Yahoo has been acquired by Verizon and I just don't like the idea of ISPs becoming the content creators also. This is just a dangerous thing. Anyway, I don't want to get there. But the point is that when Verizon acquired Yahoo, Mozilla terminated their deal with uh, Yahoo and switched to Google. Even in those days when Firefox was using Yahoo as the default search engine, they allowed users to switch to Google with just one click. But Linux Mint has gone out of their way and tweaked Firefox to remove Google from the available options. They have removed Google at all. So if you really want to switch back to Google, you have to go through a lot of hoops and loops. I know that you know Linux Mint is monetizing from Yahoo, uh, but that doesn't mean that you will make it harder for users to switch to Google. I mean, I know open source is not about choices, but deliberately removing an option kind of flies flat in face of open source. It, 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 that sounds more like a proprietary company, not an open source player. So I feel that offering choices when it's convenient to you, that's easy. That's not a big deal. But offering choices when it can hurt your bottom line is what shows the true character of any open source player. And that is why I respect and love Red Hat and uh, a company like SUSE because they, 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 they know it may hurt, but they release everything as open source. And sometimes uh, SUSE forks Red Hat project and sometimes Red Hat forks SUSE project if they need to. It hurts their bottom line, but that's how open source works. So I'm not very happy with what Linux Mint is doing there. And that's why I'm giving them some hard time because that's not what I would want from an open source player. And <laughs> what is even more outrageous is that the fact that Linux Mint's own website uses customized Google for search. I'm sure that they do it because they monetize through that customization. So, so they are, they are, they're making money through Google on their own site and Yahoo on the Linux Mint, but they are make, playing some dirty games, which makes it harder for people to switch to Google, which I think is not nice. Uh, so those are certain things that don't make me very comfortable with Linux Mint. Uh, I have been using it as I said for a while and I had mixed feelings about a lot of things. One of the things was that uh, that I, I, I'm not very happy with the UI and this is not anything about the personal preference or liking. It's more about if you there is a lack of consistency between the icons in the file manager versus icons on the desktop, you know, wide icons, you know. So the, the icons on in the file manager, they look like kind of modern uh, Mac OS like icons, but the icons, uh, system wide icons, they look, for the lack of better word, cartoonish. So the UI of, you know, Linux Mint leaves a lot to be desired. You know, I don't feel that I'm using modern application, sorry, um, modern operating system. Um, I also question the choice of default application as I gave you example, you know, of, uh, of uh, Firefox with Yahoo or, you know, um, Thunderbird instead of Evolution. And another thing I'd, I'd, I did not understand, if you look at the bottom bar of Linux Mint, it has a terminal there. If you're targeting mamas and papas, what is terminal doing there? And then don't forget the snapshot tool. So uh, I don't know. I just, uh, I, don't, I, I kind of feel that it's, when I look at Linux Mint, I don't know who are they targeting. And, and the whole Yahoo Firefox things kind of makes me uncomfortable because I have a feeling that if push comes to show, Linux Mint may make some, you know, uh, decisions which may hurt their users as long as it, it, it benefits their own bottom line. So I kind of don't feel comfortable with this distribution. And that was one of the reasons I don't use it. Um, I also feel that uh, Cinnamon has uh, served its purpose. It was a good uh, project when Unity and GNOME were going through that transformation and people wanted something, you know, stable because you know, there are too many changes happening. But, you know, I feel that computing needs to move forward. You know, user must be conditioned uh, to try new things at the gradual phase. Otherwise, you will kind of create a generation of users who are afraid of trying new things and they panic if something changes. 
and that is dangerous because you know you will essentially create yet another breed of uh, windows xp users who 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 panic at every change and so so that's my fear with you know sticking to such you know uh, very very conservative uh, ui there uh, so i feel that linux mint should ditch cinnamon and they should embrace uh, uh, gnome shell which has a very consistent very nice ui it's modern work that they are doing there and what linux mint can do is that help gnome developers in adding value on top of gnome shell so instead of wasting resources in reinventing the wheel they will be bringing something new to the table and they should of course stop playing dirty games with google and firefox you know uh, so these are some advice that i have for linux mint uh, developers I feel that it's a good distribution for those who are <laughs> who are still on Windows XP and they want to move to Linux, uh, or it's a great distribution for uh, you know a lot of people who are not very tech savvy. But as I gave example of R Sync and Snapshots and Terminal, uh, Linux Mint should you know sit down and you know rethink their whole strategy and you know. Uh, I mean, they have been around for such a long time. You know, by by this time, you know, it should be it should have a very you know focus and target audience so uh, i think it's a good distribution it's one of the the good distribution i won't call it great uh, but it's, it's it's not for me for sure um, I, I mean i will i will play with it for a while i'll write a review for linux uh, pro magazine and then wipe it and go back to the linux distribution that i use on my systems uh, can you guess which distribution i use let's see if you can guess anyway thanks for watching see you next time and uh, hope you enjoyed the show Bye for now.